Hi, this is Penny Haynes with Marketing with Audio and Video, and tonight we're going to be talking about the long tail, the cycle of sale that you are trying to promote when you're not just selling something small, you're not selling something necessarily right away. Uh, the long tail is very important when you have possibly a large project or you have a product or a service that is higher in cost that takes more of an investment from a client. And because of that, they need a higher level of comfort, really, with you. And I think this can cover a lot of different products and services. For me, I'm a software creator. I have stuff that starts at $19.99 a month up to $5,000. And then, of course, you'll have coaches. Some coaches, they have programs, which is a year-long worth of coaching or a certification program, and that can cost multiple thousands of dollars. So sometimes what you need to do is give people a while to get used to you, get to know you. And that's what this call is about, and that's why Chuck Raffman is with us tonight. He is from ISS North America, and he is going to be talking to us about how his company utilizes audio and video to help promote that level of comfort, give his information-hungry audience the information that they want, and hopefully be able to build enough loyalty with them to get a sale. So, Chuck, did I kind of cover that correctly? I think you did a great job. <laughs> well, great. So, Chuck, why don't you take a moment and go ahead and share who you are and a little bit about IFS. Okay, okay. IFS is an enterprise software vendor. So, we develop software that is used in multiple departments of a company. In our case, we're uh, used by manufacturers and other industries and utilities around the world. And this is software that would start uh, with something like the general ledger in accounting. It would include functionality used in HR and human resources management, uh, customer relationship management, manufacturing. Uh, we have a particularly strong offering in the area of maintenance and enterprise asset management, you know, uh, software that would help a company that owns a lot of expensive equipment keep that maintained and operated in such a way that they get the maximum return on that investment. And I think, Penny, your characterization of you know, products that have a long sales cycle certainly applies to us. The sales cycles can take years. We're a piece of software that someone might run for 10 years or more. So a lot of deliberation goes into uh, researching and, and, and selecting a product when it comes to enterprise software. And, you know, it, we're, we're certainly not the most expensive offering in the area of enterprise software, but, you know, we are talking about six, seven figures. So, you know, it is something that, you know, people do a lot of due diligence on, to be certain. And due diligence. I like that. that. That's really what it is. We're allowing them to research us and find out more about us and get as much information out of us before they make their decision, correct? Yes. You've got a software in the six, seven digits. You also have a show. So talk about what your show is about. Either there's a, uh, a particular group of people who participate in our sales cycle. We wanted to you know, make sure that we could reach out to, and they're difficult people to get. These people are IT consultants. Our product is complex enough uh, for most people who are unfamiliar you know, with it the, for the great unwashed of the enterprise software world, a lot of times when they're going about selecting a product, they'll hire a consultant to walk them through this process. Ah. For us to reach out to every potential end user, even within our relatively defined vertical markets, would be you know, very cost prohibitive. But if we can reach out to just one of these, these influencers, as we call them, these outside influencers, these consultants, that is something that really works very well for us um, because they might participate in, you know, five, ten, maybe even more selection cycles a year. Sometimes they're officially running the selection. Sometimes they're um, you know, sharing knowledge informally with people as to, you know, what enterprise applications they might want to consider. They are a very difficult group to get because they travel a lot. Direct mail didn't seem to be the thing to do for them. Um, mm -hmm. Print advertising, you know, that's kind of hit or miss. Right. Um, but, you know, when, when someone is mobile like that, what are they doing? They're sitting there in the airport, they've got their headphones on, and they're listening 
oftentimes to podcasts. And, you know, this is a very tech savvy audience. It seemed like a podcast would be a particularly appropriate method for reaching out to them. We didn't want to produce a podcast that was overtly commercial in nature, you know, when it, whether it's our white papers or our general approach to our uh, customer and prospect base. We don't always want to be talking about how great we are, but rather we want to be that go-giver. We're offering something of value. We want to make this complex technology comprehensible and make sure that people you know, really understand it. You know, frankly, that's something that probably helps us in the market more than anything else is the, is this culture where, you know, we probably are more, you know, personable and approachable with our, our customers than some other companies might. We started producing a podcast based on a couple of existing white papers. To begin with, we, we had a slightly longer podcast than we, than we have currently. We started off with a five-minute news segment followed by a 10-minute uh, interview segment. That was, was reasonably successful for us. We have since broken it up into two podcasts where each month we post a five-minute news segment, and then we also post a 10-minute interview segment. And that has, has been a really smart move for us. One reason is that we're, we're finding that this content isn't really consumed as a timely periodical all the time. Uh, a lot of our older content is still getting excellent traffic. So we wanted to make this something that would have a longer shelf life. Uh, so it, it's worked us to help keep that, that content really fresh uh, months and cases now even years after it was first posted. It also gives us more content out there. So the total number of, of, of streams that we're having every month is, is, has been increasing more rapidly than would be the case if we still had uh, the single file each month. Well, that's all for this excerpt from the Marketing with Audio and Video show. This has been an interview with Chuck Rathman of IF, as in Frank, S, about their podcast and about how they use it for the long tail of a sales cycle. Of course, I'd love for you to go pick up my free excerpt of 101 Things to Do with Audio and Video to promote your business. You can get that at 101thingsaudiovideo.com. And of course, as always, our show is brought to you by the Commercial Creation Center personal assistance from me plus simple software to help you create and post audio and video online to promote your business. Please join us live next time, Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time for the Marketing with Audio and Video show at marketingwithaudioandvideo.com.